What's up everybody? Welcome back to this old trike. Today, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what's going on. It's uh, it's gotten real. Um, trike Fest. I leave for Trike Fest uh, in two Mondays. Today is Saturday, the Saturday, two Saturdays before Father's Day, whatever day it is. So it's like eight or nine days until I go to Trike Fest and I know what I want to bring to Trike Fest. I know what I can't bring. Um, things are just crazy. This is still on the table. What's what? What am I doing? Let's uh, let's show you what's going on. The things that are going through my head as I prep for Trike Fest. We'll call this Trike Fest prep. Okay, let's start with this guy. We're gonna finish this, right? We're gonna get this done. We're <laughs> we're so close. So. I ordered a skid plate from Noah Olson, um, Swamp Outlaw. So I got a custom rear skid plate. I got that from my buddy Ryan Mallon. I don't know what brand or anything it is. But all this lacks is the skid plate. Um, a couple nuts and bolts here and there. I got some NOS, not NOS, but brand new hardware. I'm going to swap around with some things I wasn't happy with. Over here, I've been wet sanding my tank. So I've taken it down to 800 and then back up to 2000 and I'm gonna, you see it's drying out. So it goes from not looking, looks semi matte to very matte. But once I start hitting this with a, a dry lamb's wool buffer, it should start to bring it back to life. So I'll show you how that goes, but this is many hours into just that alone. But once the tank is done, the new skid plates on, uh, I got to put that new air filter in just very, very minor incidentals. And then, and then it comes off the table. So that's one. You remember this guy, the old swamp outlaw lifted 200 M with a 200 E motor. Well, you saw that video. We had issues and it required me to get down to this level. Because I wanted to check out why was I having issues. Was the front sprocket war? And as you can see, the front sprocket is really not that bad. You can see the nice square tip on that. Uh, you'll see this is broken out. And if we look at this, bunch of damage there. That's probably when you were watching me ride this and it goes click and stopped. That's probably when this started to happen. But it's right through into where the flywheel goes. So that piece is, is done. Um, my buddy Rich has a 200E motor. Uh, I gotta decide whether I wanna do a full motor swap or just swap out what I've got. Uh, there's a lot to be said for not disturbing gaskets. Like if his motor is plug and play, maybe I just do that. I've got the motor that came out of this. I was just looking for that piece. If I had a new one of those, I would be back in business. So I got some decisions to make. If I can get this up and riding, it's coming. It probably will come anyway. I could bring the the uh, 200M motor that came out of it. My buddy Red Mike said it stopped running after he sunk it. Thought it was a head gasket. I bought a gasket kit that I have there. Look at the shop. This is real. All right, we're keeping it real for everybody. My shop is atrocious. I got router, I got tools out. I've, I've recently rebuilt my dock. Um, I'm gonna put that video out there if you wanna see that video. Bennett and I launched it yesterday. It took way too long, like this whole last month. Gavin left, I pulled the dock I've been working on ever since. That ruined a lot of, of Trike Fest plans. Um, plans such as the 88 Big Red. What's, what's going on with the 88 Big Red? It's right there, it's right there. I feel like I've let you guys know. What's going on? Did, did Bennett get a, a custom 70 built? Nope. Ran out of time. What else is on our to-do list? Let's talk about that. Left outside. We got Bennett and Lane here riding Hondas. You remember Lane from Gavin's video? Bennett's on his phone. Probably posting a TikTok. So I'm going to bring back the old suspended, fully suspended 200S, previously owned by PJ Hart. Uh, 
if you remember any videos on this the rear shock was blown out um, I have not rebuilt it but I did discover that a first gen 250R shock will fit will bolt right up so I did that running like garbage uh, because I, I haven't dinked with the carb the carb is weeping some gas and uh, I think I want to swap it out with the one I bought for it and see what I what I gained with that I think I'm gonna bring this 85 200s nice nice quality rider uh, so here's what one looks like when it's fully suspended and here's what they look like when they're stock with a that's an Arctic cat pack basket from a sled from like the 60s my buddy uh, Eric came up with a the ad that shows that in it for me but I've got a front rack I can put on that make that look nice so I think I'm gonna bring both these they got the hardtail ride so it'll either be a 200 s if I'm feeling manly that day or this is where I was working on my dock it's nice and empty in here or maybe I'll take this 185s or maybe I'll bring both this is the one I got from my my school teacher friend got it up and running before I go I got I'm working on a lawnmower stinking mice chewed off a coil wire this is from working on the dock. I'm all out of sorts. Look at this. I'm getting dust all over my new Honda service sign. Sawdust. Pink Palomino. So if you were at Trake Fest last year, you saw Palin starting this by jumping the solenoid with her little wrench that she keeps in her bar pad. So that's how she would run this thing. Um, I'd like to pull the tank off and get into the wiring harness and hook up the start button. So... Uh, she can actually ride it without jumping it and choking it out. What else? What else are we bringing? Of course, old trusty. I gotta order a chain. The chain's way too loose. I can't tighten it anymore. I think if I get one ordered tonight, I'll have it by the by the time we go. Change the oil. I have the custom header from uh, Sam Harkabusic. I want to put on this. I'll probably ditch my over fender wipe it down look how dusty it is that's just since Gavin was here it's probably a lot of sawdust that was blowing in from working on the dock uh, I was thinking about bringing a 90 or something but I don't know they're all they're way back in there and it's just a pain in the butt maybe I got something in the other room let's do a count because I know I can I'm, I can only bring about eight so one Two, three, four, five. So that's five. Six, seven in this room. So we're up to seven. Then it's SX. We gotta re-staple those fenders. And I've gotta rebuild the forks, front forks and his SX. So that's eight. So here's the thing. The, the pink Palomino can ride on top of the lifted 200M. So technically we're back down to seven as far as a footprint goes. And I think the 250R with a short track kit might be my, my eighth. I can fit 10, but I have to leave space for my buddy Derek's machines. So I guess I don't even have room for a 90. I don't have a 90 I want to bring though. I don't have a 90 I could fit. I'm not bringing anything from Finland. I'm not bringing anything from England. All domestic machines. I'm not bringing a Honda Line clone trailer, unfortunately. Just don't have room. If I could figure out how to get it in there without killing myself, I might do that, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm not bringing this four-wheeler because it's Trike Fest. It's not Quad Fest. This isn't anything Vinny Staff is associated with. Remember Vinny Staffa, guys? He was a good guy. I miss him. Wonder what he's doing now. So yeah. So I'm overwhelmed. So how many projects is that that I've got to do? Gas tank, miscellaneous stuff on this. 200M, got issues. Fully suspended 200S needs a carb. Pink Palomino needs uh, wiring attention. 350X needs a chain and oil change and that header. Have I shown you this header? I want to do 
Header swap. You coming? Come here. Come here. Let me show you. This header from Sam Harkabusic. Custom box it came in. Look at that. Artwork and everything. Swap that out. SX needs needs forks rebuilt. So this video is gonna show some of that stuff. Um, and if it's not done, it ain't coming. I've, I've done that two years in a row. Uh, PJ Hart is very up to date on my projects. I'm, I'm stressing him out just by telling him about the things I'm attempting to do. My wife's given me uh, a blank check as far as time, you know, nights and uh, weekends. So it's Saturday. I've got tomorrow. I've got five weeknights after work. And, uh, and then two more weekend days. But that Sunday, I'm going to start loading the trailer. We leave 6 in the morning. On Monday, we will arrive 6 or so in the evening on Monday at Trike Fest. And if you're thinking about going, if you're on the fence, you should go. I don't know if this video will air before. Probably air it. Probably try to get it together that night as I'm loading the trailer. Got to end it at some point, though. We'll see. All right. That's all I got for you. Got to get to work. Bye. So we're making some moves in here. One of the moves we're making, if you notice, it's a little smoky in here. I just rode my 85 250R for the first time in three years. And uh, it's not done yet. We are still awaiting a skid plate and a roller. And I got to talk to Curdy because I can't rev out. It sounds great. But it won't rev out, so got to figure that out. Uh, brought this in here. We've got to take these forks out, start to uh, rebuild those, and also do a hot staple repair. If you remember my son's uh, tip, whoopsie, um, from a couple winters ago, he almost got all the way out to that fender, but he didn't. So we're going to staple those back together, maybe put some more in that, maybe heat them up from the backside and melt them. These fenders were only bad like this when I got them, but now they're bad in a couple other ways. So so that's that. And then uh, the old short track 250R really doesn't need anything. Um, we got this going after a little bit of hibernation when Shred80 was here and didn't make it into any videos, but I did ride it a little bit uh, while he was up. So just need to give it a once over. Those are actually pretty nice Dunlop tires, so I might swap those out with something less nice. Maybe maybe put those cat tires on some rims and put them on here. Maybe those rims. I don't know. But that's some of what we're doing next. We're out here working on three wheelers, me and my boy. Bennett, what are you doing here? What are you working on? I'm unscrewing the bolt that does the holding of the fender, I think. Fork. Fork. Yeah. So we are going to do new fork seals in this. These were starting to leak. And then our boy Gavin from Shred80 came and he uh, he finished it off. Whatever life these fork seals had left in them, he he squashed that life out of it. So we're going to be dropping the forks out of here. Uh, we got to take the front tire off once we get a little bit further. Why don't you hold off just a second and we'll, we'll, oop, we'll maybe take the uh, the front tire and rim off to pull things out a little bit more easy. We're gonna change the oil. We are going to put new tires on it, some Serwa tires that we got from Travis Gisclair and Matt Serwa. And uh, this thing will be sitting pretty, but let's get that tire off.
It is the Tuesday morning before Trike Fest. I've got some brand new Serwa 250SX tires. That we're going to put on some used 250SX rims, the 86-87 uh, style with a raised lug. They, tape, they take the tapered lug, just FYI. Bennett and I got the front end off his machine. We haven't done the oil change yet. Forks are over here draining. We are waiting for uh, seals to come in for Mr. Curdy Eldridge. I've got the case side for my lifted 200M with the 200E motor in it. Um, definitely has some damage. Uh, if you watched that video, you heard the, the chunky clunking. You can see it there. You can definitely see it there. So chain came off and did some damage and we are going to do a, a nice, a very nice quality repair on this guy. Uh, I've got a spare 200E motor I'm going to pick up this week and I've got the original 200M motor that I'm going to bring with me to Trike Fest just for good measure. But right now I'm going to wad some JB weld in and around that and in and around the other side. Let that set up while I'm at work today and... And maybe when I get home, I can get that back together. Trying to get these things checked off. So you know, once that's together, I can wheel it out to the other room and it's ready to load. And that's pretty much ready to load. And after we get the forks rebuilt and oil changed and tires on this, that's ready to load. And I got to do a little, little uh, test with this to get it running just a little bit better. It's a, it's a little bit boggy at high, higher RPM. So once we get that at least a little bit more dialed and the uh, skid plate from Noah put on that'll be ready to load so just trying to get my affairs in order after this uh got the fully suspended 200s previously owned by pj hart boy that's a long long name um i got a carburetor i want to try out on that the 200S I'm bringing, I got a carburetor I got to try out on that, or at least clean that one. Pink Palomino needs attention. I don't feel like I'm, I've got too little time, but I've, I've got to stay on top of things. And I just had a curveball. I got a decision to make. I'm not going to tell you all the details, but a guy I know, a guy that's been in one of my videos in the past, he's got a couple really nice machines that he told me he is thinking about selling and I've got to decide whether or not I want to pop on them. It's significant, so got to make that decision and that might determine what I bring to Trike Fest. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. But right now I'm going to do this JB Weld and then I got to go to work. So I'll catch you after work. Our tires have been mounted. So these are the Serwa 250SX Pro Vector 301 lookalikes. And they are spot on, except for obviously Serwa instead of Oats. What do you think, Bennett? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. You know what's not cool? I was just telling Bennett, I came out here with my seal puller and here's a fork seal. See how it's got the words on top on it? Mm-hmm. Let me get the camera to focus. The words go up and it's got that thicker lip around the outside, thicker than this lip. This side that's facing up now is the side that's supposed to face down. But how were these installed? These were installed upside down so they did a great job of preventing oil that got past it from getting back down into the fork but they were installed upside down it's hard to there you go so we're going to pull that other one out we're still waiting on the other ones to come i did a little jb weld repair on this 200e case so i'm going to pop it back on that motor and get that together. And Bennett is going to come over here. The other night I, I came through and I fixed a repair 
This would be a perfect time to overlay that video of you making that crack. And that was a fun ride. That was two winters ago. So we've got that stabilized. I'm going to have Bennett clip all these ends. Let's show him the tool we do this with. Most people are aware of this tool now. This is a hot stapler. And you can load these into. And when you pull the trigger, it heats those up. And you can embed them into the plastic. When he did that crack, I think we undid this crack a little bit. So we're going to fire a few. We're going to pull these two out. Fire a few more into that. And then I'm going to have him just kind of go around these and melt the plastic into itself so it, it'll it strengthen it a little bit more. What do you think, Ben? Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. I'll get you on camera doing that. So we've been melting things together. We cut off a little, some pieces of some old 200E fender I had. So Bennett says he thinks he's done, but I think maybe, did you get deep enough? Do you feel like he got it good? How how deep did you get? I can go deeper. Why don't you, we put in some extra material here. I think it might be good just to go a little bit deeper. Don't go through, of course. But we're just following up our our staples with some marrying of the plastic. Give it just a couple more minutes and we'll we'll definitely have it. What I'm doing over here is I'm putting my 200E motor back together and I'm about to try to remember how the subtrans goes together. I think I, I think I got it, but we'll find out if I do or not. Here we go. Okay. I've got this back together the best I can remember. I didn't put the recoil on just yet, but let's see. Does she turn over? No. <laughs> hmm. All right. Let's see what that's about. It was just a neutral safety switch. Let me check the gas. Fresh gas. starting fluid, you know? A wake up juice. Just a little bit. Okay. Was that temporary? Everything's vibrating. Or it smells like burning oil in here. You got clunked and now it doesn't... No, it's not running. This was the best thing for this three wheeler. It's like fuel's not flowing, right? Wouldn't you agree? 
Let's pull the tank. I got looking in the gas tank after I'd already put some fresh gas in there. And it was really cloudy, so I'm suspecting we've got fouled up gas, so it ran good before. We just got to figure out what's going on. As long as it doesn't start leaking oil again, I'll consider that a win. But then the question is, why was the chain jumping? That is the question. I don't know the answer. Bennett said he did a little bit better job on these. Time will tell. I'm going to let it stand. That's his work. We're going to wait for our fork seals. I might go in the house and say hi to my wife. I think this machine's going to look nice with those servo tires on it. And I uh, look forward to seeing that. For some reason, I feel like I got to pee. I don't know what's making that sensation come over me. I do need to pull the pink Palomino out. Maybe, maybe I can get that in here and get the tank off it. Get it in this area and figure out the electronics. The girl deserves that. We're doing pretty good though. These need a couple minutes each to get assessed. 350X needs the oil change. We're getting there. All right. That's it for me. Over and out. On today's episode of so much to do, so little time. We've got the pink Palomino here under the knife. We're just trying to sort through some electrical. The wiring harness that's on this machine is the wiring harness that came with the, the 110 motor that we put in it. China eBay motor. And uh, this wiring harness was the spare recommended by my buddy Glenn, who kind of recommended this motor setup to me. That came with a, a, a stator of its own that he ended up using because he needed to. I didn't need to, so I didn't. But the plugs aren't interchangeable. I'm trying to, to get the starter switch, which did not come with this wiring harness and motor setup, but it came with that. I'm trying to get it to work over here and he's going to help me a little bit. I'm close, but this is so my daughter doesn't have to keep jumping the solenoid, even though she looks like a rock star when she does that. So that's going on. We've uh, changed up the crew in here. We've got two 200 S's. You'll notice they're both 85, but one looks a little bit different. One's got a PK suspension kit in the rear and a Terry suspension kit in the front. So fully suspended. This one's just got the standard front suspension, but they both need to have their idle jets looked at. And this one, I've got a different carb I might try on it. And then we've got the good old tried and true 350X. We're going to do an oil change, uh, oil filter. Uh, I'm going to drop a couple links in the chain because I never did that when I went down two teeth in the rear sprocket. I'm going to do a chain inspection. See if there's any issues with that. Uh, if I need to, I'm going to run to my dealer and grab a new chain. I didn't get one ordered in time, so I don't have one on hand. And I'm going to bring my header, this header with me, to uh, Trike Fest and probably pop that on there. But I want to give it one last ride with the Kevin Grabowski 3D printed heat shield. Because it's going to be 90 degree weather there, and that'll be a true test for that. So, going to get on the oil change for that. I've got somebody coming to meet me at lunch to buy this old Fat Cat motor. Fork seals are still not in on the 250SX. They're coming from Curdy. Should be here tomorrow. And uh, the servo tires to go on that machine sit right there. It's a beautiful morning here in New York. Let's see where we... What do we get? All right. Just like that, the work day's over. We're back home. We switched into our work gear, riding outfit. Got our riding gear on. Um, oil's drained, filter's out. 
chain is off. I did a chain inspection because the one I ordered uh, didn't come in time. And I know it won't be here in time based on tracking. So I'm going to run my chain that I've had on for a while. There's no cracks or anything in it, so I feel fine with that. Uh, I took a link out because I took two. I put on a rear sprocket with two less teeth. And I think I can move that forward and put my chain back on. And if I can't, then I'm in a pickle and I'll have to figure that out. But I still have one business day to figure that out. But before I get to this, I'm going to work on this. And I want to talk about my buddy Glenn. My buddy Glenn has gone out of his way to tell me what he did. He told me to get this motor. He told me to get that wiring harness. He had to get that wiring harness because he had a bad stator in the motor when he bought it. So he swapped out the stator, which made it easy for him to use the wiring harness that went with that kit. And I need to do that here so I can plug that wiring harness in and use that on off run switch per his instructions and pictures he sent me. So Glenn, thank you for doing what you did. And I'm going to get after this. And uh, I think the next video we show might be me pressing the button on that and having to start up. That would be cool, right? What time is it? It is 6.19, 6.20. Let's see how long it takes me. Okay, it's 8.20. So if you're doing math, that's two hours. Did this take, did it need to take two hours? No. Now, at least 30 minutes of that was me hanging out with my buddy Doug Pete. He came by and picked up an axle from me. But, uh, it, I was confused a little bit on this. I had some things backwards, but I straightened it out. If I hadn't boogered things up a little bit to begin with, I think it would have been better. But let me show you what I did. Okay. So, I don't have a ton of gas left in the bowl anymore. But I now have a key ignition on off or off on, so it's back on. Kill switch is on. So I swapped out the stator. This is the extra wiring harness that I had. Now I just gotta tie it to the frame, make it look pretty. And we'll be good to go. No more jumping the solenoid for my girl. Okay, we're back out here. Me and my boy. What's up, Bennett? <laughs> so, uh, we have received a special delivery from our favorite guy at 223 Cycles, Curdy Eldridge. New fork seals for our 250SX. You can get these from 223cycles.net. Right on his website. Also, a fresh set of fork boots. Now, these aren't OEM. OEM aren't available. These are the next best thing. So, Curdy sells these. 223cycles.net. Get them from him. Or if you're going to Trike Fest, I'm sure he's going to have a, a box of them there he's selling out of. So, what we discovered, I can't remember if we captured this or not. But see how on the, the top of these fork seals there's some writing and some indents? around the outer edge and then see how on this side you don't have that it's just kind of a thinner a thinner lip I know it's hard to focus but these were installed this way with that thin lip up they should have been installed this way so these were installed backwards now I don't trust that these haven't been compromised in pulling them out so I'm not going to reuse them I'm going to put in these for my buddy Curdy Eldridge 223 cycles as we just said Bennett is going to work with me. We've laid everything out. Nothing was overly dirty, so there's not a lot of cleanup to do. The oil, even though it's mixed right now, was fresh red ATF, uh, automatic transmission fluid. So it was not... These didn't need to be rebuilt had the, the seals been installed correctly. So we're having to do this for, for nothing really, but... It's a great learning exercise. You can smile on camera, you know, a little bit. Okay, there it is. Our fork tubes are over there. We're going to get this all back together. 
we looked at the uh, the top side of Bennett's weld job. You can still see the crack, but honestly, it's discreet. Let's see. 20 feet away. Look at those perfect fenders. Right? Right. So we will have this back together, get the new tires on it, do an oil change on it, and then we'll be good to go. We have done it. Bennett rebuilt his first set of forks. He did a great job. Now just for comparison, here's the fork boots we took off. Now again, these aren't OEM, but these are the best replica that's available right now. Look at the difference in the size of the, the rib. So that's more, more in line with the OEM look, not to mention the color is beautiful. So these will fit your, your, uh, 200Xs, your 85s. I don't know if they fit 86, 87, but they might. Uh, all of that stuff's not available anymore. And I've got a set i got to put on my Fat Cat one of these days. I believe they will work on that. I had some blue zip ties. that These will end up to the rear and side of the, the fork. So it should give a pretty clean look. We've got to clean up the lower a little bit better. We've got to clean up that a little better. And we got to clean up that a little better and then we'll start with reassembly. We will save you the cleaning process. We are ready to assemble. We've cleaned our parts. Not super duper crazy because this thing isn't a, a restoration or anything. But Bennett is now ready to get these forks on. So Bennett, do you remember how we took them apart? No. When we took them apart, we took the the clamping side off. To get the tire off so we're going to start with the drum side put that on i might just put this somewhere to to catch the action and then we'll go from there
Well, can't even remember where we left off. What was I doing? Were we working on the SX? Well, the SX is together. We, uh, we took a break and went to a Father's Day party yesterday, and uh, when I got home, I finished it off, put the oil in it, and made that ready. I put oil in my 350X, and I, I found a decent condition used chain in my inventory. Uh, my new chain isn't going to arrive till later, and, and uh, I'm going to see if somebody's got a chain at Trike Fest maybe to swap that out, but... I found one that was honestly not that bad. So I threw that on it and I maxed out as far as how far I can move the carrier back. But it's better than the one I took off it, in my opinion. So that's ready to roll. Had the carb off this 200S earlier. I put a Curdy kit in there. Curdy Eldridge 223 Cycles, 223cycles.net. Uh, so that's running better. But honestly, it's I didn't clean thoroughly the carburetor so i want to interview curdy while we're at trike fest and have him teach us you know peasants how to diagnose and what to know and what to do and how the carburetor really works because it's a little bit of magic if, if you if you're me and like me so the uh, 250r actually i gotta talk to curdy about this and get that jetted differently skid plate from noah olson I'll be taking delivery of that at Trike Fest, but I am every time I look at this thing, I just grin from ear to ear. And I got a lot of nice feedback from you guys on on the video I shared, and it it was honestly honestly surprising uh, how much it resonated with you guys. Uh, obviously, it resonates with me, and that's sentimental, especially on on today, which is Father's Day. If you're a father, happy Father's Day to you. If you are acting as a father, you know, and, and married into a family or, or with, with somebody that you're a father figure to those kids, happy father's day to you. Um, but yeah, days like today, I miss my dad tremendously and watching that video of him coming out to the barn, to the shed, to film that, you know, makes me sentimental and I, I tend to be that way anyway, but just, I was surprised uh, how much, you know, you guys shared in that, you know, and, and, uh, that's awesome. Thank you for all the, the kind comments, but now back to your regularly scheduled three-wheeler programming. So the pink Palomino is, um, is with us. We got the e-start put on that. I did a touch up. I had a, like a little rust spot starting on the corner of the tank. So I, I used a little wire wheel to clean that up and I touched it up. And can you tell I did it from here? No, you can't. So that's pretty decent. That's definitely consider that I told somebody consider this the rough draft because this was not thrown together but hastily built and all the pink painted surfaces is spray paint and it's it's not holding up and like you see I got the key dangling down there and I gotta I gotta finalize some things on this but it was a good learning process on that. You remember the 83185S that I got last fall from a former school teacher? That's coming to Trike Fest. Uh, that and the 200S are hardtail, so if we want to participate in the hardtail ride, we are covered. That's why I'm bringing those. Didn't have to do anything to this. This is running and ready. I do have to wipe it down. All the pollen got to it because I had the doors open on the barn from working on my dock. Bringing the 80 five short track kit 250r in case i want to zip around on the, the track put these 18s on it got some four snows in case i want to take the 350x down the drag strip that'll be fun but that's really uh that's really it nine machines i don't know that i've mentioned what i'm picking up on the way but we're picking something up on the way couple something up Comp couple there's a couple things we're picking up. If I could speak, that'd be great. But we'll leave you in the dark on that. Revisiting an old friend, we'll say. So, I got totes. I got stuff. I'm not bringing all that gas. But I'm going to get my trailer situated, and I'll, I'll show you how it's going, how I do this. I don't really feature this on Trike Fest. Just consider this part what to bring and, and how to pack a bunch of machines for Trike Fest. 
We're stacking them deep and selling them cheap here. I have a total of one machine on the trailer. <laughs> uh, I was starting to load them and I realized I gotta load my shelves up and then load a little bit and then load my shelves up and then load a little bit. Oh, I'm getting a call from Shred 80. I gotta go. Jeez, you know, Shred 80 calls and talks your ear off and now puts you 13 minutes behind. Got an AC unit. All right, so here's what I do. And that is cleaning stuff. No, I forget. I've got one tote with cleaning stuff. I got one tote with uh, just kitchen stuff. And then a smaller, got my generator, got my my bag chairs back there. I got a hard time focusing. I got one of these full you know, camper carpet deals. Got my pop-up, got a grill, got a griddle. This is a, an insert I made for this door that I has a hole in it that I could put an AC unit in down there so we can cool it off at night if we need to. I forget how I made it. I don't know if I gotta bring some screws or whatnot. This is a shelf that's gonna go in those brackets. So as soon as I'm done with that up there, I put that in. I can park more three-wheelers under it and I work my way out. I got another shelf here. I'll drop that down to whatever height I can get away with. I have to do this because I don't have enough room to, to get what I'm picking up loaded in there. Got the 85-200S for the hardtail ride. Same thing with the 185S that's on the trailer. Got my 250R, of course, my Ryder 350X. I'm going to put the SX backward on the truck because I can run that in reverse. And I'll probably throw this on the truck uh, the other way. Tetrasize them. Got the fully suspended 200S previously on by PJ Hart ready to load up. And just more to do. These old fenders I can throw on this thing when I want to use it because those are true 85 fenders. That's the cleaning supply tote. Oh, the other tote had helmets in it. This is my tool tote. I got some other stuff I'm going to load into that. I've got a fresh clean bucket in case I want some water. I got my, my chemicals in here. And that is the story. Coolers and stuff are in the house. I got to bring this blanket over to get washed. I got one in the, the wash already. It got all stanky. But yeah, Shred 80's coming in on Wednesday. I'll be there tomorrow night, which is Monday. And I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, if you're going to be there, look me up. I'm going to try to get this video out probably tomorrow. So, because I'm not going to have time to do everything tonight based on how this is going. But I'll, I'll chime back in one more time when everything's loaded and we'll call this a, a video. All right, catch you guys later. I put one in with a wide axle or not. We're going to be rubbing if we do. Yep. That's the play. That's the move.
I like that. That's plenty of room. You can cohabitate friendly, nicely. No hard feelings when we get there. Well, it's 10 of 11. I'm probably going to be getting up around 4.30. You can't see what's really going on in here. But you can see the pink palomino. I've got this opened up because my buddy Derek is dropping off some stuff to me on my way through. There's my white 250R. And as things filled out, I ran out of room. So I'm picking up two machines tomorrow. Oh, and there's the cat. And uh, I got to stand them on end. And I can tell you that is going to freak the guy out that I'm buying them from. And I'm apologizing in advance, John. I tweaked my finger moving the, the 200M. I think I pulled my middle finger on my left hand like out of socket and like had to pop it back in. It happened really fast and it felt very unpleasant. But uh, once it was in, it was in. And there wasn't any change in that. So... I've got a couple nice blankets I'm going to be laying down to keep keep the uh, grab bars from incurring any more scuffage or whatnot. It's a te uh, technical term. It's late. i got to go get some sleep. A couple last things off my list to, to do in the house. Cat wants me to walk him in, I think. So here we go. We'll see you at Trike Fest. <laughs>